where we are right now, we have moved portions of the battlefield to Alexander's Bridge here in Chickamauga on the battlefield. And this is going to be a September the 18th action. This is really where Wilder's Brigade is going to be of U.S. Uh, cavalry. And this is where some of the main parts of the battle are also going to kick off. Just behind me up the Alexander Bridge Road, you have the Alexander House probably about three or 400 yards back up this road to my rear. It's going to be sitting there on a knoll at the time of the battle, and it's going to be burnt and destroyed during the battle. And a lot of the soldiers in their accounts are going to refer to that house in their accounts as the burnt house or the burning house. So that is where Alexander's home was. And where we are now is where the modern replacement for Alexander's bridge is now going across the Alexander Bridge Road. And let's talk about a little bit, uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going to occur here on September the 18th, 1863, it's going to help kick off the Battle of Chickamauga. So here at Alexander's Bridge, of course you've got cars that's going over the modern bridge here today. And on September the 18th, 1863, Rosecrans Army is stretched out uh, 12 miles from Chattanooga to Lee and Gordon's Mill and Crawfish Spring. Now, Rosecrans knows that the Confederates are moving north again from the Lafayette, uh, from Lafayette, which is 10 to 12 miles from this location. He takes two cavalry brigades under the command of Robert H.G. Minty and one under Colonel John T. Wilder, which is also known famously as the Lightning Brigade. And he has five regiments of Illinois and Indiana uh, troops on horses and mules, and they're armed with Spencer repeating rifles. And they become a potent weapon here, as he did uh, before, to block, to block other crossing sites. The Spencer rifles are really going to help him out here along this portion of Chickamauga Creek at Alexander's Bridge and in other um, several parts of the riverbank here. Now, they arrived here around September the 17th, and their mission is not to only guard the bridge, but to also guard all of the fords and crossings along West Chickamauga Creek. And they are strung out for several miles along the riverbanks that you see here. Wilder has around 2,000 men and a battery of artillery. And in 1863, we talked about the Alexander House is just sitting a little bit down the road from where we are now in this direction. Now, this is a modern replacement bridge at, during the time of the battle here on uh, September 18th. This was a wooden bridge, and this spanned across West Chickamauga Creek. The banks are steep, they're rocky, and fords in these bridges are important, and the 17th Indiana and Mountain Infantry are deployed along these creeks here. Now, the 98th Illinois troops are here as well, and the 17th Indiana tore up some of the bridges here, and they used a the planking and built a small fort out of planks. And Company A fought from here as Confederate Mississippi forces approached from the south. Now, the Confederate forces they were approaching had two brigades of infantry of Whitehall's uh, Mississippi. He had five regiments of 1,800 men and another 2,000 men of Govan's Arkansas men, uh, Brigade, uh, which was on the side of the road here in the creek bank. And the Illinois, would, the Illinois troops would move up. And the firepower of the Spencer rifles helped offset that man disadvantage here in Chickamauga at Alexander's Bridge and some of these other crossings here they were defending. St. John Liddell put in his report that the firepower of these two regiments were so severe that they inflicted 105 casualties on the skirmish line uh, only. So they only lost 105 men and they helped prevent that crossing here on the 18th of September. And why is this important? Well, it prevents Bragg's plan from taking effect like he wanted. That is often something that's overlooked. All of the actions that occurred right here in the woods you see before you, on the creek banks you see from this side, are often forgotten about. They're thought of as not as important as the 19th and 20th actions of the Battle of Chickamauga, but they are what leads directly to the battle and this outcome. So when you're talking about the Battle of Chickamauga, these are things you need to think about 
that you may not think about that are important because they're overshadowed by the much larger events that's transpiring here. But Alexander's Bridge, what occurs here, what occurs at Reed's Bridge, what occurs at all of these crossings where these mounted cavalry are trying to deflect the and, and prevent Bragg's movements are going to be important. Right here behind me, you have a monument to the Indiana Cavalry that was here in this position. This is where they were. They were defending against those Confederate attacks. They're going to disrupt Bragg's plan. They're going to throw Bragg off from what he's trying to do. Is Bragg gonna deviate from that plan? No, he's not. He's gonna push forward with it anyway. He's just going to adapt and overcome as he goes along. So that is why this spot is important here in Chickamauga. <laughs>